Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. Welcome back to our simple scripting series in Unity 3D. So far this week we have covered several scripts such as lerping, slurping, and color lerping on objects. Now in this video we are actually going to play with some lights in Unity. The updates that we're going to be making to our lights are we're going to update the intensity range and color via scripts. Now the first thing that we actually need to do is add a new object to our scene. So we're going to click on game object light and I'm just going to add a point light for now. We're going to zero out the position of that point light and there it is. Okay, so we can see that it is now in our scene. So let's actually move it up a little bit so we can see it sort of reflecting on our surface. And I'm actually going to turn off this cube for now. So we're not going to mess with any of the values for this right now. Instead, we're going to go straight in and start our scripting. So we're going to right click, create a C sharp script. And we can just call this light adjuster. Okay, now we're just going to go out to our IDE and start our scripting. So I'm going to open up my light adjuster script here. And let's get down to work. Okay, so for this script, we are going to need a lot of variables. And I'll go into why we need so many in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and add them first. The first thing we're actually going to need is a public light. So we're going to need a reference to the light we're updating. Now we're going to set up our variables in basically three segments. We're going to create three variables for updating the range, three variables for updating the intensity, and four variables for updating the color. So let's go ahead and start on range. So we're going to create a public bool should change. Actually, let's just call this change range. And we're just going to set this to false. We're going to create a public float uh, change speed. Actually, let's call this range speed. And we can give it an initial value of 1.0 F. We're going to create a public float max range. And again, we can just give it an arbitrary value 10 F. We can actually add a comment here just saying range variables. And now beneath our range variables, we're going to create another comment and we can just call this intensity variables. And the first thing we're going to need is another public bool. We're going to call this one change intensity. Again, set it to false. We're also going to need a public float intensity speed. And again, we're just going to set this 1.0 F. And for our final variable for the intensity, we're going to create a public float. And we're going to call this max intensity. And we can just again set this to an arbitrary value of something like 10.0 F. Now one more comment here, we're going to create a comment for our color variables. And the first thing we're going to need is a public bool change colors. Again, set it to false. We're going to need a public float for our color speed. So we'll just call this color speed, set it to 1.0 F again. And now we need two colors. So we're going to do a public color start color and a public color end color. And finally, we need a private float that we can just call start time. Okay, so let's go through these really quickly. Basically what we're doing is we, we have a reference to our light setup. Then we have variables that pertain to changing or updating our range of our light. We have variables for updating the intensity and variables for updating the color of our light. Now you could break this apart into three different scripts if you wanted to, but that's not what I really want to do here. I want to actually have all of this functionality within a single script. So the first thing we actually need to do inside of our start function is just say my light is equal to get component. Make sure we specify that it is a light component that we're getting. And we need to start our start time. So we're going to say start time is equal to time 
dot time. And that is all that we need inside of our start function. Now we are going to have a little bit more functionality inside of our update function. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Basically what we are going to need inside of our update function is three if statements. So let's go ahead and just create three if statements here. Now we need to give the if statements something to work with. So the first thing we're going to look at is if we should change our range. So if change range, then we're going to do something. The second one, we're going to say if change intensity, then again, we're going to do something. And finally, in our last if statement, we're going to say if change colors, then we are going to again do something. Okay, now we actually want to write out what we're going to do, of course. So let's go ahead and get rid of our first comment here. Okay, so changing the range is actually really simple. All we have to do is say my light dot range is equal to math f dot ping pong. And inside of the ping pong, we're going to say time dot time multiplied by our range speed. And we're going to also pass in our max range. Now it is important to note that we are using mathf.pingpong and when we're using this that means that this change is going to repeat itself so it will go up and then come back down. In this video I will also show you how to do a single change to a light so basically just increase the range once and not have it go back down. Now inside of our change intensity we again have a really simple update we're just going to say my light dot intensity is equal to mathf dot ping pong and inside of here we're going to pass time dot time multiplied by our intensity speed and we're also going to pass our max intensity here so really simple again this is going to repeat though okay finally in our color changes we do have one additional statement we need to create so we're going to create a new float t is equal to math f dot sign so again we're creating a repeating function here and we're going to say time dot time minus our start time multiplied by our color speed and that should do it for that statement the next thing we actually want to do is say my light dot color is going to be equal to color dot lerp and inside of this we're going to pass our start color first then our end color and finally we have to pass t Okay, so that's going to do it for this script. Very simple. Each of these will repeat, though. It's important to know that these, each of these uh, statements will repeat. So let's actually go ahead and save this. Let's go back out to our scene now. We're going to click on our light. And now let's add our light adjuster function to it. Okay, cool. Now, I am going to go ahead and just click on change range. If we look at the range up here, we can see that it is set to a max range of 10 right now, but I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to 20. And let's go ahead and see what this does. So let's press play. Now, we don't see a lot. Well, okay, now we're seeing a little bit more happening. You know, we can see that it is starting to show up on our platform more. If we look at the scene view, however, we can see that it is slowly growing and getting bigger. Basically, we are just updating this range over time so that it's just in continuously increasing the range of this light. Now, it's already gone up to the max, and now it is decreasing back down. Of course, we can increase the speed here. So if I double it, it's going to move a little more quickly. It's going to go down to zero and back up. Let's make it even bigger. Okay, so again, it's moving more quickly now. Just, you know, just growing and shrinking a little more quickly. So let's go ahead and stop that playback. We're going to now uncheck change range. And let's go to change intensity. If we look at our intensity, we see right now we have an intensity of one. So leading the intensity to 10 should be fine. And let's press play. And of course, we can see that the intensity is growing fairly steadily. If we look at our intensity on our light, it is going up. So it's getting really, really intense right now. It's going to hit 10, and it's already coming back down. Now, we don't really have anything to indicate the changes taking place to intensity in our scene view, but we can just get a little bit better look of what's going on. 
And of course we can update our intensity speed again. So if I bump it up to 10, of course it's gonna increase much more rapidly. So this could be something where you just create like a security light or something like that. Okay, so now let's actually test to make sure our change colors is working. Of course we do have to add two colors here. So I'm going to add from like a dark red to a bright red. And let's press the play button and see what happens. Okay, so as we can see, it is changing. The color is changing. If we look at our color for our light, we can see that it is updating. We can, of course, change the speed here. And now it should update more quickly. Very cool. All right, now the cool thing with this script is that we can actually have all three of these going at the exact same time. Now, I wasn't exactly happy with the way that this uh, color lerp was working, though, so we're going to drop it down to a... Let's, let's do two brighter colors. So we're going to go with, like, a brighter red, and let's go with a blue. Okay. Now let's press play and see what happens. Of course, we've got them all changing at the same speed right now. So if I go press play, we don't see a lot happening yet. We can see that the, ch the color has changed a little bit. So it's red, and now it's the bright blue. We can see that the intensity has grown if we're looking at like the shadows casted by the light right now. It's still increasing. If we look at our uh, scene view, we can see that the range is continuously increasing. Now our intensity is actually going back down. Now, these aren't exactly matching up though. And the reason why that is, is because we've got them set to different max values. So if we wanted to, we could unplay that. And now if we go to our speeds, we can get even more diversity going on. So let's increase our range speed up to 10 and increase our max range, uh, let's say five. And now for our intensity, let's change our intensity change to five and our max intensity, let's go to 20. And for our color speed, I think one looked pretty good. So let's actually go ahead and press play again. And now we should see some changes happening fairly quickly now. Yep, so as we can see, it is sort of just flashing the different color lights on our platform. Sometimes we're getting the red a few times in succession and sometimes we're getting the blue. And it's sort of continuously changing between these. Of course, we can change the max range. So if we bounce this up to 10, it takes a little longer to get the range going. But, you know, really this is just a very cool sort of script that we can create to update the lights. Now I did say that I would show you guys how to actually update each of these different parameters once basically. So basically what we need to do is we need to go back out to our script here and we could set up a repeatable variable. Now let's go ahead and do that for each of these. So we're going to create a new public bool and we're going to say repeat range is equal to false. And I'm just going to copy that really quickly paste it under each of these and we're going to change here we're going to say repeat intensity and under our color we're going to say repeat color okay very cool now let's go ahead and save that of course it won't have any effect yet but it's always nice to save your work now what we actually want to do inside of this if change range we need to add a nested if and this is going to say if repeat range then we are going to do the same thing we're already doing else and we can actually just copy what we already have and paste it and remove the mathf.pingpong and we also have to get rid of our comma max range here so basically right now this is just going to continuously increase our range over time which is not what we want so we also have to throw another if in here which is not awesome but kind of need it. So we're going to say if my light dot range is equal or greater than or equal to our max range, then we are going to say change range is equal to false. Okay, so let's just go through this really quickly so we understand what's happening. Basically, we're saying if we should change range, 
and we should repeat range, then we're going to do this mathf.pingpong. If repeat range is not on, then we are just going to say mylight.range is equal to time.time .time times our range speed, and we're also going to say if our light's range is greater than or equal to our max range, then we're going to stop updating our range. Okay, so let's go through the same sort of thing on our change intensity. Of course, we have to add in our nested if here, so we're going to say if repeat intensity, then we're going to do our mathf.pingpong, else, and I've already, I've already got it copied, let me get rid of this extra space, and inside of our else again, we are just going to delete the mathf.pingpong, and our comma max intensity, and finally, we are going to say if max intensity is greater than or equal to, oh, sorry, if my light dot intensity is greater than or equal to max intensity, then we are going to say change intensity is equal to false. Okay, now we need to do the colors. So let's actually, again, add our nested if. So we're going to say if repeat color, then we're going to do what we already have listed here. Else, again, we can just paste what we have. We're going to remove the mathf.sign call here and remove the parentheses on the end. Now, we don't have to add an if check here because this will, of course, just move to where we want it to because we're calling alert function. Once it reaches the destination, it will not go back. So let's go ahead and save this now. Let's go back out to our scene. We're going to leave the repeating unchecked and let's press play. Now, what should happen is it should just increase once and stay there. So as we can see, our range has stopped changing, our intensity has stopped changing, and our color has stopped changing. So it works. Awesome. Now, of course, our script here was fairly simple. We did have to do a lot of if checks and things like that. But again, it is, you know, a pretty simple script to create. You know, it, it creates a lot of uh, really sort of dynamic ways that uh, we can update our lights. Of course, you may not want to put all three of these different changes within your single script. You may want to break these changes out into multiple scripts. But again, that's sort of on how you want to do things. Okay, coders, that is going to do it for this tutorial. We are, of course, going to continue developing this series and continue adding new videos to it. Please be sure to drop us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or if you are enjoying this series. And as always, thanks for watching.